You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. Hello, my name is Simone Petrella, and I am CEO of CyberVista. I was very into national parks, and I wanted to be a national park ranger, more specifically maybe a research scientist to study volcanoes. So I know there's not a lot of logical link to cybersecurity there, but I did discover that the fatality rate of Uh, volcanologists is quite high because you cannot study them without actually entering an erupting volcano. (laughs) So, turns out it's a scary field to go into. (laughs) 9-11 was a very transformational event for me. I had gone to undergrad in Washington, D.C., thinking I would get involved in something in government or, or something in the policy realm, and I think also being in Washington, D.C. at the time, actually really changed my focus and interest in international relations and specifically counterterrorism. But it was very much driven by, you know, the war on terror and things that we were dealing with in the post 9-11 era. I got into the DOD, um, thought I would stay there, and I actually ended up leaving to stay within the industry. I went to work for a defense contractor ostensibly to do similar work to what I had been studying, trained just with, you know, a different color badge, if you will. And I distinctly remember I was in between contracts and I was fortunate enough to have a clearance and I had a manager that said, hey, can you go help out on this contract? We have a small team that's supporting one of our clients doing intelligence support to computer network operations. And I had no idea what that meant. I had no concept of the subject matter or anything else, but I was like, sure, let's give it a try uh, and see what happens. And I walked onto that team and it was very small. And I have a distinct memory of one day being asked by my manager, would you like to stay on and do this full time with this team and this mission? So I jumped head first. I said, great, let's let's give it a try. And I, in some ways, feel like I have been riding a wave um, <laughs> ever since. But as our team continued to grow and I rose up, what I learned was that when it comes to being an analyst, I ended up having a 0% success rate taking someone with a purely technical background and turning them into an analyst. But what I could do was take journalism majors and pre-law or people with all these unique backgrounds that may have been like mine or maybe biology majors, just anything And if they had an interest and a ability to learn, I could teach them the technical. And when kind of the idea of CyberVista started, it was how can we tackle the skills gap in a way that actually solves the need of the employer and the mission? It's actually from the perspective of only the individual. Go get this degree. Go sit for this credential. Go take this training course. But then as the employer on the other side, we're looking at these job roles that are changing, they're morphing, we're starting to evolve them as the mission space evolves. And there's really this massive chasm between the two. So I really felt like there was a way to help bridge that gap by looking at more of a 
organizational and employer centric way to how we kind of fill the talent gap and the skills gap that was around how do we think about the roles and kind of the measurable need we have for these types of skill sets in these jobs, as opposed to putting the responsibility on individuals to do it themselves. I've learned that every day is a new set of challenges when you are running a company. Um, There's pretty much not a facet of the business that I don't have to touch on a day-to-day basis. My leadership style is around, you know, it's impossible to build consensus, but you can gain buy-in. And so I think it's incredibly important as a leader that everyone has a say and input into every decision that we make as it pertains to where they are. And it's important for everyone to be heard. And I think co-opting people into the process is really important there as a leader. I am a firm, firm believer in the idea of empowering people to really own and kind of run with the things that they're passionate about. I always say to new people that come on to our team, I would always rather have to rein you back in because you've stuck your neck out a little bit too far than push you forward. And I think that's just about like trust and accountability. People will go and do amazing things, but My job is to give them the tools to really excel in those areas. The first thing I would say is to not be afraid to pursue and in some cases jump into something that's totally outside your comfort zone. Um, There's the old adage to fake it until you make it, but It's true because it's not that you have to fake it, it's that if you are interested and passionate about it, you will get there. And the second thing I would say is to spend the time to start to form relationships and a network of people that you admire and respect and find interesting to engage with, regardless of the industry or the work that they are in, because you never know, A, what opportunities that will present over time, and B, it's amazing how much that diversity of what I consider to be informal mentors can provide perspective-wise as you think about those kind of next moves moving forward. At the end of the day, when they close the box, what do you want to be remembered for? I want to be remembered for having a you know, compassionate and big heart and having even if just a small piece to play in, in someone's life experience, I think that in itself is rewarding. Now, a word from our sponsor, the Johns Hopkins University Information Security Institute, currently seeking qualified applicants for its innovative Master of Science in Security Informatics degree program. Study alongside world-class interdisciplinary experts and gain unparalleled educational, research, and professional experience in information security and assurance. Interested U.S. citizens should consider the National Science Foundation's CyberCorps Scholarship for Service program, which covers tuition and a $6,000 annual professional development allowance, as well as providing a $37,000 additional annual stipend. Apply for the scholarship and the fall semester by March 1st. Learn more at cs.jhu.edu slash MSSI. MSSI.